Well, let's go ahead. It's 11 it o'clock. So let's, let's uh, go ahead and get started on your birthday, Rob. And uh, this webinar okay. is called Pre-Approved, right? Uh, a webinar about mm -hmm. small business funding. And part of what was the driving, the driving force behind this is uh, this. Did you ever see the Blues Brothers? Yes. Uh, a long time ago or at some point. Let me long time ago. Let me find my share here. The, uh, so I, I was thinking, I think of this when I think of people marketing, because remember those guys had to fill up the, um, they had to fill up the dance hall for their big concert that was going to save, save the church. And then he, right. uh, oh, let me make sure that the sounds on this and Blues review, one night only, the fabulous Blues Brothers, Brothers. show band and review. <laughs> On the <laughs> I don't know. That's my favorite part of the whole movie, I think. <laughs> so um, when I see this, uh, all this advertising, I think to myself, you know, it's kind of like that, right? These guys, these random broadcasts, I get these ads all the time. Um, and they've got to be the old list because I have not been necessarily running a business uh, for, for years, but I still get uh, these emails. Mm -hmm. So it must work. Is the, is the thought that's in the back of my head. So this is just the prelude into what we're gonna get into today with Rob. Um, so meet uh, Rob Addison, and I hope I spelled your name right there, Rob. The, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, who you are? Okay, well, um, thanks for having me on. I've been in small business finance for about 22 years now, started out uh, back in January 99 in equipment leasing. Um, did that as far as working for a few other companies for several years before branched out on my own and had uh, two different businesses over about uh, you know an eight to ten year period that um, did okay. And then when the recession hit, we pivoted, um, created a curtain entity, which is the Bank Loan Depot, to really kind of be more diverse because when the recession hit, it was it was really hard on equipment financing. So we branched out and have really never stopped. Um, to where now at this point, I handle everything from SBAs, to equipment financing, term loans, working capital, credit lines. Um, you know, we have some good partners we refer business to on the real estate side. So there's really kind of a little bit of everything that we do now. Very good. So this is why uh, you were interesting to me because uh, this, since we all have to deal with uh, financing questions, or at least a lot of us on this, the um, your experience. So you've you've seen it all and done it all. Whether or not you have, I'm going to say in 22 years, you've bumped into a lot of stuff. So this is what I thought we'd cover today. So we'll just talk. The general topic is business financing. I'm going to have you review some solicitations that have come my way uh, just since we talked last time. Um, <laughs> I expected a lot more, but there, uh, there were a few still. Um, and then we'll do what I call a common knowledge review, where <laughs> it's basically me barking out to you the things that I think are pretty common knowledge, which may or may not even be true. They're just like things I've heard um, over the years. You can give us some insider's advice, and then there's an open Q&A for anybody who has a question. How's that sound? Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good? Okay. And then you can give us some next steps. So this is the voicemail that got everything started. Um, it happened right before uh, I talked to you last time. Hey, it's Michael calling back. Uh, based on your business's done in Bradstreet score of 76, we do still have you pre-approved for up to a $500,000 line of credit starting at 4.9%. Now, the funds can be available in just 24 hours if you're interested. The offer does expire soon, so please call me back at 949 288-0745. Again, the number is 949 Have a wonderful day, and thank you. The, uh, have you ever heard things like that, Rob? Yeah, yeah. quite a bit. <laughs> it's pretty common. It's, it's pretty a common. It's a loss leader. Yeah, it's what I refer to as kind of a loss leader situation, like, uh, you know, when car dealerships have, you know, have 100 Ford F-150s on the lot, they advertise one at below market value um, and they get everybody in and then they lead them over to the other, uh, to the other trucks. It's just a typical <laughs> loss leader. There's, there's nothing, unfortunately, nothing unique about that. It's very common. So that wasn't just for me, Greg Chambers? <laughs> no, if you call back, they wouldn't even know who you were until you told them, so. <laughs> right, calling into some center. Um, I get these cold, cold emails, but I haven't I've actually received one that I've remembered not to delete because they usually go to spam. Um, but I have gotten a, quite a few of these sponsored emails. 
right? My uh, QuickBooks account. Um, do they, I, I don't know mm -hmm. where these coming from. Are they looking at my actual QuickBooks account or is it just because I'm a subscriber? Um, Cause I also get them from PayPal, um, right? Which is like, they just make it look so well, like, kind of like that voicemail, it's just so easy. Well, it depends on who that email is coming from. If it's coming via PayPal and via QuickBooks, then it, it's actually, they've partnered with a uh, FinTech company that has a, a solid idea about your cash flow. Uh, but when you get into the small print there, what you end up finding out is it's um, it's your typical short term working capital or credit line that um, is basically just on your cash flow and only only modestly on your business or personal credit. But if it comes directly from PayPal and um, uh, from QuickBooks, then, yeah, there there is actually some due diligence which has been done, which is, you know, not very common, as we'll discuss. <laughs> Okay, so they at least at least the computer has some idea as to what uh, may be going on inside my accounts. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, especially if you use those accounts on a regular basis. Okay, and then today I got this thing, um, which is uh, so it seems like there's been a lot of news around small business capital on the small mm -hmm. business funding, and this one uh, popped up, and it was a cash advance company. So it's these former Robinhood employees launched Paraffin, a finance startup for small businesses, and. Mm -hmm. Um, it seems to be one of these, the, the interesting quote that I took out of it was, uh, small businesses are not necessarily happy with online lenders, uh, providers of cash advances, uh, dropped to 25% from 37% and small businesses are most satisfied with credit unions out of all types of capital providers. So, mm -hmm. um, I don't know what you, uh, can add to that. I just thought it was interesting that it just happened to come across my desk this morning. Um, of all things. Yeah, I mean, it's it's always interesting when when um, you know people from somewhat related industries branch off into small business financing because you know make no bones about it, they're attracted to the return on investment um, and really the lack of regulation. It, there's no, you know, there's a spirit of entrepreneurship, but it is you know like anything else, it, it's about making money and um, trying to frame what they're doing a little bit differently, but you know, don't get me wrong. There are some companies out there that have done things a little bit differently, uh, but it still kind of revolves, you know, predominantly around the short-term working capital model, um, yeah. which is usually what these guys have. They just package it a little bit different and add some, you know, bells and whistles to it. Right. Um, good stuff. Okay. So now I thought we'd get, uh, get into, um, some of these things that I think uh, I think everybody knows, and I don't know that this is everything that everybody knows, but um, I'll pop through these and then you can react to them and tell me what you what you think when somebody like me who doesn't really know anything about uh, bank okay. financing what they do. Should, so should I apologize? Should I apologize in advance? I don't know. But, yeah. <laughs> I think there's a couple in there that are a little that are uh, anti, uh, just anti anti, like uh, banks hey, don't take on debt. So this is uh, th this is the uh, oh uh, the Dave Ramsey school of uh, of running a small business is whatever you do don't take on debt. Well, yeah, that's it's actually I had a very similar conversation with my brother-in-law re recently who owns a, a powder coating company down in San Antonio, and he asked me a, a very simple question. He goes, "Why would you ever why would you ever buy a piece of equipment for forty thousand dollars, or why would you ever finance a piece of equipment for forty thousand dollars?" Why don't you just wait, save up the money and pay for it in cash? And I said, well, if it takes you six months to um, to save up that money, that six months worth of return on investment that you're losing out, that business you're losing out on. Uh, plus, typically, if you finance it, you instead of getting a $40,000 piece of powder equipment, maybe you can go to $75,000 and do three times the amount of business. So on the business side, um, debt is typically... Um, something to be looked at is how are you going to parlay that into a return on investment? Because a $2,000 monthly lease payment that's generating you $50,000 in revenue is a solid investment. Okay. So that's a, uh, that's part of it is what are you going to use the money for? Right. And I think that's, um, yeah, it's, it's yeah, people lose that. that. Yeah. If you're borrowing money on the business side, it's, you know, how is this helping you to make money? is typically a question that I'll ask clients when I'm talking to them. If they can't answer it, then there's you know, other conversations you have with them to try to find out what their situation is. Right. Uh, what about this one? Everybody knows how a loan works. 
not anymore. <laughs> alone is not alone anymore. There's, you know, there's so, since the recession, I have seen um, this industry evolve to create, you know, 1A through, you know, 1Z. There's so many different types of loan and loan products. Um, it can be very challenging for a business owner to kind of understand what in the world they're getting into, uh, because unlike, um, the commercial side where it's, you know, basically mortgages are predominantly government backed in this government backed situation. There's no TILA, no RESPA, there's no TRID. Um, so the full disclosure situation doesn't really happen. Um, and, and, and that makes business owners rightfully skeptical and question a lot of things. I don't think enough of them actually question what they're getting into. Um, they, they need the money and they'll kind of jump on it when they can get it. Yeah, because who has the time, right? If I'm running a business, who has the time to learn how all this stuff works? The, um, yeah. Uh, unsecured. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just coughing. Sorry. Okay. The uh, unsecured lines of credit are hard to get. Um, not as hard as they used to be. There's now we have um, close to five partners that we'll um, send our clients to that do unsecured uh, lines of credit. Um, but those, you know, that's, again, like anything else, going to depend on clients, what type of, you know, rate they get is going to depend on their personal credit, their cash flow, and how much they qualify for, um, you know, but you can get it. Um, it's not as easy as it was pre-COVID, but those guys are coming back and starting to make good headway into that, uh, that market niche. So it's, it's available now. Now, does uh, an unsecured line of credit, is it... Uh... Does it matter what you're using it for? Like as far as yeah. generating an ROI on it or do, is it just like, no, 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 we're just only interested in your ability to repay regardless of what you use the money for? Um, yeah, I think that's as far as what they qualify for. Um, yeah, the, the, most of the lenders don't particularly um, get into what they're using the, the money for. There's an assumption in certain declarations within the contract. It's only for for business use. And I always joke with clients, uh, you know, hey, if you're using this money to go to Vegas for the weekend, hey, don't forget to bring me. But yeah, and they all laugh, but you know, they're all they're all using it for business purposes. Sometimes it's just cash flow until they get uh, until they get paid. Sometimes it's to fund um, projects, whatever. But um, you know, I've only had one instance in the last 10 years, maybe two, or one I can think of off the top of my head where a client came back for some additional funding and was declined because they used the funds for something they weren't supposed to use it for. So that was uh, that was pretty shocking because I rarely, almost never see that. You never see them check or you never see a business owner do it? Uh, both. both. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, I think business owners, there's at times people will, will take the, take the money out and then use it for personal reasons for whatever it is, you know, renovate a bathroom at their house, whatever. Uh, there's no way, there's no way to really regulate that because they just take it out as a draw. Yeah. Um, but if they don't default, the question is, do the lenders really care? No, they, they, you know, I don't think they, I don't think they sweat it. You right. know? Uh, yeah. I don't so, think it's a big deal. Interested in getting paid back. Uh, this one was pretty exactly. strong. Banks are not your friends. <laughs> um, I would actually put that into bold and a couple of exclamation points behind that. Okay. Uh, because uh, so it isn't just you just got to be really good with friendly with your bank your local banker and then uh, and, and all your cash, well, all your lending needs will be taken care of <laughs> not a chance in hell um, you know most of the brick and mortar banks that we, we've grown up with um, even pre-recession I would talk to people about equipment financing that would say I'm going to go to my bank and and I would tell them you know go ahead uh, the reason we have as much business as we do is because your banks are interested in your deposit money and your payroll and maybe your mortgage and, you know, maybe a credit line for your business. And most of the credit lines have gone away, but basically, you know, the, the banks that we know, the brick and mortar banks, um, they're, they're interested in um, deposits and fees are interested in charging us to use our own money, not necessarily lending. Uh, that's because of the way that's evolved over the last 25 years, banks, on the, for the small business owner, don't really become um, a partner or an asset. They, they let the secondary uh, market kind of uh, support the business side of it. And um, they take their risk on the credit default swaps. They, they don't take it with small business owners. Huh. That's interesting. Uh, bad credit, no loans. 
oh gosh, no, there's, <laughs> you know, it's bad credit isn't, isn't as much of an issue as nowadays, um, as just bad cash flow management. I see more people get declined because they're um, constantly overdrafting their accounts or return checks or inconsistent deposits um, than, than well, it's just bad credit. I mean, there's so many lenders, um, if you want to call them that, that have entered into the small business finance and cash advance market that if you've got the cash flow, you can find a home. It's just going to be very, very expensive. Yeah. Interesting. Um, you need a business credit score, like my little voicemail, my Dun & Bradstreet score. <laughs> um, um, it's, it's, ad, it's, it's advantageous. Well, here, here's the thing. First of all, being, uh, Dun & Bradstreet has evolved from a credit rating agency to really more of just a business reporting uh, profile type of situation. Most of the lenders that I know um, that talk about the credit issues a business may have are going to be referring to other reports like the Experian Business Credit Report. Um, on the equipment leasing side, pay deck, the pay deck score is there. Um, you know, Dun & Bradstreet um, does help a company build credit. And if they have a good profile, it's certainly helpful. But if they lack a profile there, it's not going to matter as much. But, um, but again, and I qualify that statement with, you know, as your as a business owner is trying to level up from say small business, working capital loans to unsecured credit lines, to term loans, and certainly to SBA, um, having uh, an awareness and, and managing your business credit is important. The, the difference is, you know, you got to go to multiple places to, to see how you're doing. To see the scores. Okay. Um, so is a business score more important than, uh, or does it even have any effect on your, your, uh, your personal credit score? Does the business credit score ha affect your personal credit? Or, it, or which is more important, or do they relate to personal each other credit. at all? Or personal credit? Personal is credit, important. yeah. Personal credit. Um, typically, a, a business owner under duress will first see business credit um, slow paying on their net 30, their net 90, their own bills, you know, usually because they're getting slow paid or there's a, a drop in business. When it hits a business owner's personal credit and, um, you know, they're, they're willing to be laid on a mortgage payment or a car payment or something, that's a significant sign of, uh, of a credit risk, you know, and that'll always coincide with shorter terms and higher rates because people are trying not to fund them for very long. They want to get in and out pretty quick. Yeah. Okay. Uh, paying off early is good. Oh, it's great, but you got to understand the uh, language in the contract to see what the what the early payoff is, um, because uh, well, I mean, some of, like some of our better partners on the term loan side, you know, there there is no prepayment penalty the same as a traditional business loan or, or home mortgage, um, and some of our credit line companies, you know, are the same way. Uh, but most of the short-term working capital companies will, you know, the better ones, kind of the first and second position people will have um, incentives to have clients pay off early and then give them a discount. Um, the reality is it's, you know, it, it's such a shorter term that, that clients tend to want to hold on to their cash and, and they typically let it just run to the end. Very few people actually uh, pay it off early. Yeah, interesting. Okay. So you need an accountant for reports. I guess can you elaborate on what the kind of question is there? Well, this is just like everybody knows that if you're going to do mm -hmm. a bank or get any sort of credit, you need really good reports. And then that means you need to hire your accountant to do reports for you. To have them, yeah, to have them prepared. Um, uh, that, so that's actually an interesting so most people will generate and just produce, you know, their P&L and balance sheet out of their QuickBooks. Mm -hmm. uh, what I've learned, I've been doing SBAs now for, for 10 years, is, you know, the bottom line is going to be the bottom line, but helping clients to organize their information so the credit analysts at the banks and ultimately the SBA uh, find it easy to understand. Um, and the reality is there's so many different ways that people handle their books that you have to sit down and say, 
hey, it makes sense to you, but it's not going to make sense to your credit analyst. You know, here's kind of the way, seriously, here's kind of the way that you need to organize it. I mean, you can't change what your bottom line is, but you can present it in a um, articulate manner that's you know easy to understand. Um, and that's kind of where, um, yeah, I've been fortunate for the last going on nine years now to have the same um, SBA processor that can sit down with clients and say, oh, honey, no, this is, this is like reading a foreign language. Here's kind of how the best way to present it. And, and that's kind of one of the services that we provide um, because the majority of small business owners uh, can be pretty scared of doing anything with their financial statements because other than entering something in a QuickBooks, they have no idea what happens until they turn it over to their accountant at the end of the year. Yes. And the account fixes it once a year. You know? right. And so, and they just do journal entries and it's just, it's just, yeah. It's like another language at times. So, um, getting your getting your um, accounting reports um, organized is important if you want better financing, for sure. Okay. The bank is a tough is is a tough one, but it's the best. Everybody knows that. <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, the reality is that that's actually a true statement. If if your bank is willing to um, to finance you. Um, there is kind of an asterisk to that. If they're willing to finance you, whether a credit line or equipment financing or working capital or whatever, typically it's going to be the best rates because they're the ones that can get the closest, um, you know, besides maybe the SBA to uh, mortgage type rates, you know, four, five, six, seven percent. Uh, but one of the caveats to that is that they often will attach a, a lien to, um, you know, personal and business assets. So Johnny business owner gets a great line of credit and, you know, six months later, he goes to refinance his house and, and, and there's a lien on his house. And that, that becomes a problem because the bank wants to be paid off before he does anything else with that, uh, with that mortgage or that, or that asset. So um, yeah, it, it's just the reality is the bank, the banks just don't really do much small business financing. Um, I always encourage clients that, that say something of that nature to go ahead and try their bank and the majority of them then will call us back and and say okay so what are my options and and that's when we get into it get into our stuff i mean the, the the banks are just you know like i said they're holding companies to charge us to use our money now yeah interesting more i have more uh it takes weeks or months for funding uh, for good funding yes for good funding yes yeah so, um, our, so, our very so, so anybody promising less, there's, uh, this should ring, a, uh, it should make the hair on our neck stand up a little. Uh, it should make you, it should make you be cautious. I mean, I can qualify that with, um, a couple of our, our best products, which are, um, three, five and eight year term loans that are non SBA products. They have the ability to process and fund loans in, you know, four to six to seven days, typically though it'll take a couple of weeks from application in to evaluation to funding. But if, if somebody can do 24 to 48 hours, um, it, it's not likely going to be inexpensive money. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Equipment or real estate loans are best. Yes. Yes. Oops. Yes. And, that, and that's because there's a hard asset or Oh, well, to, you know, with equipment, you're always going to get, um, you know, a four to five year term. Um, you get to depreciate the equipment, the use of the equipment to generate revenue. Um, so usually that's a great thing. And the real estate loans are always, um, now granted, real estate loans uh, via a mortgage company are definitely are the best. Um, there are a few lenders um, that have hit us up to send over business that will use real estate for commercial means, like our someone's personal property. Um, and that's always a slippery slope to, to, do, to get involved in, mm -hmm. you know? So um, when you say real estate, if it's through a mortgage company, uh, then yeah, it's fantastic. You can't beat it. And, and we've, I've actually directed clients multiple times over the years that you get into their financial situation. Um, and you ask them about the, you know, the, the equity in their house and they have a huge amount of equity. It's like, well, you know, just reinvest in your company, go pull the equity out and pay off all this crazy interest debt and, and just get back to work. And, and plenty of them have done it over the years. So that, that's a good avenue. Uh -huh. But whenever, you know, 
like one of the companies that, that always wants business from us, they'll offer somebody a, you know, a $250,000 loan over five years at like 18% using their home's equity. I mean, I, I personally have a problem uh, putting someone in a loan like that that puts their, their personal residence at risk. That seems to be, you know, I don't know. I just, I'm not comfortable with that. Yeah. Interesting. So years ago, I had bumped into this, uh, these guys at <laughs> this party and they were telling me about, they owned a little bank out in the middle of, of, you know, one of these rural states and they loved taking high risk um, loans. And then people loved working with them because they were a bank, like a chartered bank, but then essentially they knew that they were going to be taking over the business soon. Have you ever heard of anything like this? Like, but this was, it seemed like it was their business model. Uh, I've heard that. I've heard that on on the real on real estate um, that uh, that people will do that. They'll get business owners and they'll over leverage them, and then they'll just wait for them to default to take over uh, the property. Yeah. Um, so that's that's I've heard that for as far as taking over the business. That's I haven't heard that particular niche. I mean, what does what do I know about running a, a bakery, you know, or <laughs> or anything else? I mean, there's. You, you know, the business is in distress and the business owner is, is typically the, um, the catalyst for any success that the business has. You take them out of the equation, what do you got? You know, yeah. so, yeah, I, I, I've never come across that, but that uh, would have been a fascinating conversation to, to hear. That's yeah, for sure. I bet you would have gotten further in it than I did. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you got your sharks. Uh, merchant cash advances are expensive. So it's just kind of like what that uh, that new company was. They're kind of like a cash advance. It's you know it's um, competition is driving down the overall cost um, of the merchant cash advances, um, and there there are some that are like some of the best people I know in finance are actually um, owners of uh, some working capital companies, merchant cash advances. Um, I've known some of these guys going back almost 18 years. Um, it, so the it's expensive based on the perspective of return on investment. And the you know the example I always give people when they're talking about taking one of these is, you know, if you're Johnny construction owner that needs fifty thousand dollars to fund a three hundred fifty thousand dollar project, well, paying fourteen fifteen thousand dollars in interest in six months is just the cost of doing business, but if you're Betty the baker who needs 20 grand to make ends meet at the end of the month, it's like, well, you're going to have another, another bill you're adding um, to your debt load. So that, that doesn't make sense. So again, what's the use of funds? Um, there are plenty of those uh, companies out there that have, uh, like our primary partners have really quality prepaid discounts. So if somebody needs to turn the money over and get out of it, um, they can really cut down their costs. Uh, but like any, I feel like any loan, the same as a mortgage, you know, it's super expensive to let it go to term. I mean, you know, it, it's always kind of the, the debate you have, like a merchant cash advance, if somebody borrows $100,000 and in, you know, 10 months, they pay back $135,000, you are like, wow, that's, you know, $35,000 in interest, right, for that loan. Right. Well, there's different, tax, there's different tax write-offs and so forth. But you compare it to a mortgage where somebody borrows, you know, $100,000 over 30 years, they're going to pay back. You know, even at like 4%, they're going to pay it back 185000 right? Um, the merchant cash advances, some of the, the advantages are, um, and, and let me qualify this, like these are, you know, my least favorite product, but they're, uh, they're valuable to the business owners as a resource for capital. But, um, you know, in, in the first couple of years of a mortgage, you're almost paying down no principal, it's all interest. That's why the big banks are all into it. Versus on the, you know, on the, on the business loan and working capital side, you are, if you're in the right version of a merchant cash advance, you are, you know, banging down your principal pretty quickly, you know, and relatively evenly because it's such a short term. Um, but again, it depends on which one you get into. Good stuff. As, uh, are, are these pretty common as far as, th th am I doing all right with these? No one funds losses. So you have to have proof that you, it's going to be a good ROI. No, there's plenty of people that they don't care what what you're going to do because they're going to get in and out so fast. I mean, I get client, I get uh, lenders every day that, that send me requests for business where their their longest term is 
you know, 70 payments. So they're going to, you know, 20 business days a month, they're going to be in and out three and a half months. <laughs> so they're going to get their principal and their interest back before the guy really runs out of money. Right. Um, so you have a lot of guys that will, will fund guys under duress because they're going to get in, get in and out quickly. So plenty of people fund companies that are under duress and even losing money. That's, they're going to be there till the cash flow, uh, you know, dries up. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, business marketing loans are risky. So if you're taking out a loan for to pay for marketing. I don't think it, you know, if you have a, a known commodity on marketing and you can spend $10,000 and it's going to generate, you know, X amount of business, then yeah, it absolutely makes sense. Mm -hmm. If you're, if you're marketing or if you're taking out loans to try different things that are unproven, Sure, that's risky. I mean, we've all spent money on marketing that did not work. I mean, that's that's a given. Right. What about this one? Credit unions are best. Oh, I love my credit union. I have the same bank account with uh, my credit union that I my dad owed me when I was 15 years old. So, oh, no kidding. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, my account actually starts with the one. And when I told a family member about that, she started laughing because uh, she was, you know how old that account is? And, and then I actually found out yeah it's you know 35 years old now or 34 years old now so same account yeah i've had it all this time but yeah credit unions are the best because it's essentially it's it's the members for the members but um not a lot of credit unions do business financing you know oh. it's they they say yeah a lot of them a lot of them don't um i think some have started and it'll be interesting if it if they, if they do in mass number one how that influences the market but two when the next hit to the economy comes, you know, and they take a loss, what do their members think of it all? So yeah, yeah. it'd be interesting. Interesting stuff. Good stuff. So well done. You made it uh, through my, uh, through that piece. Now I'm going to throw you to the lions for real. Okay. <laughs> what, what off the top of your head, what is our three tips you would give to an old friend who was looking for um, considering um, any sort of financing or even wondering like, should I, you're looking for financing for my business? Um, you know, I think it's okay to respond to the lost leader marketing um, as long as you don't get into a product um, where the the salesperson at the end of the phone is, is asking you to sign this, this contract that's a short-term working capital deal and promises and guarantees you in 30 or 60 days you're going to convert uh, this into some insanely good loan offer, like, you know, 10 years at 7%, um, you know, and, and, it is, and it is even willing to vaguely put something in writing. Uh, you know, I would tell you, I've, I've done um, working capital loans, help people repair their credit and got them into SBAs time and time again. But I've also heard a lot of horror stories where people sign these short-term working capital deals, the expectation, hey, I can manage this for 30 or 60 days but I got to be out of it by then. And then they find out that quote unquote, that program no longer exists. Um, and then they find the same salesperson, them offering them another deal to go on top of the one they have. So, um, I guess so that's not even wary. like a lost leader. That that's almost like a bait and switch, right? Oh yeah, it is. Yeah. It really is. And, um, it's pretty common, um, that, uh, um, that's, that seems to be a sales pitch that has, uh, perpetuated the industry for, um, it, it's really become pretty common in the last three or four years. So it's, it's tough. I've had a, uh, heard a lot of uh, stories from, from clients that fell into that and, you know, it, it can be very hard on a business. So be very wary about, uh, about any, any, anything that is promised because if, you know, if somebody can offer you that, that better loan, they have to offer you the exact path and disclose to you how you're going to get there. Well, also the question of, well, if you have that, why am I not getting it now? And uh, one of the, one of the, well, seriously, one of the big things is they go, we need to have a good payment history with you. No, you have that with my business credit, my personal credit. You know, why do I need to pay this, this loan product um, to prove to you that I can, I can pay something that's 10 times more expensive. That is just doesn't make sense, you know, but business owners, um, you know, they want what's best for their business and, and they, they're willing to take a chance. And sometimes it, you know, it, it blows up in their face. Yeah. Okay. So that's one tip. What's another one? Um, 
you know, I would say, you know, take the time to, to ask for things in writing, okay. you know, specifically, um, you know, what's my, what's my total cost if this goes to term? What exactly are my discounts if I pay this thing off early? And, um, you know, do you have any references? You know, you're talking about this great program. Well, let me talk to a couple of business owners. Now, one thing you do if you, that, that I, I had a client that talked about, he got some references and we dug into it and he found out that it was actually just some other salespeople on the sales floor. <laughs> so if somebody's, you know, if somebody's offering you up a reference, why don't you make sure that they're actually a business owner and not his buddy sitting in the cubicle next to him? Um, so I guess it's kind of kind of two in one. And then, you know, the other thing is to uh, to understand that if you, you know, on the business side, if you're asking for better terms, if you're asking for better, you know, longer repayment periods and better rates, you know, you have to have a good profile, right? Because my most common, my most common conversation is, hey, you know, I, I want a long-term financing. I don't want a daily or weekly payment. And I say, great, we've got, you know, 10 different programs that do that. Let's talk about your profile. And, you know, then you find out the person has, you know, a sub 630 credit score. You know, they've got a, you know, a tax lien that's not on a payment plan and they defaulted on a working capital loan, you know, 18 months ago. It's like, well, that, you know, <laughs> you're taking yourself out of the running because there's, you know, there's a line around the corner for people that want to get into those products. So the standards are higher. You know, um, depending on the lender and the industry and so forth, you know, it can be anywhere from a minimum of a 630 to a minimum of a 720, you know, and it just kind of depends, you know, um, uh, again, there's a lot of industry stuff, you get kind of granular, but, you know, but even those guys that they'll allow a 630 credit score, 635 to offer a five or six year term loan, it's going to be a certain type of business. Uh, with licenses, it's going to be solid cash flow. It's going to have a lot of um, pros to it. It's not going to be somebody who's just made a mess of things financially. And you know, and and, and I understand. I, I, I talk to clients every day that have been saturated, hammered with a hundred emails in the last week, promising them the moon. Yeah. And they're they're kind of tired of you know the conversation of what am I actually going to get? It's like, well, for your credit profile, you may not qualify for the better programs. So, you know, that, that's just kind of what I understand that, you know, if, if your credit profile has taken a lot of hits, that you have to put the work in through credit repair, managing your credit, uh, managing your cash flow to get into a better situation to be financeable on a term loan in the secondary market, which is kind of what I consider us. Yeah. Okay. That's good stuff. Um, these were other questions that I threw out um, in the, uh, on this piece. What are some key questions to ask lenders? I think you've been going through that, right? So I'm kind of running mm -hmm. through this just to make sure I covered everything. Um, but uh, getting things in writing, the total payoff, there's, uh, you, you gave a lot of advice there. Uh, red flags that lenders hate to hear. You kind of, you covered a few of those. Mm -hmm. um, but are there any other ones that jump out that are just, when you, when you hear it, you think, oh no. Well, you know, I would, you know, I would just say that, uh, you know, I'm, I'd be reluctant to, to disclose the red flags because that actually protects oh. us from <laughs> yeah that protects us from spending yeah i mean i i have a you know i'm very fortunate i have a lot of great lenders that i'm partners with and i consider myself a caretaker of the files that i send to them and um, you know if i have a client that that and i've had this i'll be on the phone and the client says yeah you know it's like even if i get this loan i don't know how long we're going to last it's like well you know this guy's an a credit with he looks decent i'm about to send him to my best lender it's like yeah, I'll, you know, I, I won't send it up because yeah. that, you know, that portfolio and loan performance affects how much my, my stuff they'll buy. But, you know, beyond something like that, there are red flags. But the reality is, I'll tell you, is fintech in the last 10 years has advanced fraud prevention and fraud analysis at a pace that I, I never thought possible, like the um, entrance of technology companies into finance. Yeah. has um, has just forced the growth and development of fraud protection. I mean, it, it takes an uber sophisticated fraudster now to um, to really get through um, 
to get through these companies and to to get them for money. And I, I've heard multiple stories, um, but it's it's very hard now, and it's because fintech has driven the technology advances. Yeah, interesting. Um, are there dollar amounts that excite the lender, and why? I, I think uh, it depends on the lender, but I think anything in that 150 to 350 thousand dollar range for someone that wants it and qualifies for it, it's kind of a sweet spot in the industry um, because there's, it's a nice loan size and also it's, you know, $250,000 loan is, um, you know, is gonna be tough if somebody defaults, but it's not the same as like 500 or 800 or a million dollars. Uh, there's right. just not a lot of lenders that play, that, that play in that area. So, but, you know, I, I don't know, the sweet spot for me and for as long as I've been doing this, going back to 99 is, Someone that wants one hundred fifty thousand dollars. I don't know why that number is like the cherry. That's the that's the perfect number for some reason. There was a long time ago somebody mentioned something like the uh, if you owe, if you owe the bank one hundred thousand dollars, that's your problem. If you owe them a million dollars, that's their problem. <laughs> yeah, that's like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like it becomes a thing. Yeah. Um, uh, and then funding needs change in a hurry. Actually, I'm going to save that question because uh, we're going to come up. But right now, if there's any questions uh, that you have as attendees, you can stick them in the chat box and Rob can answer them. But I'm going to jump into uh, like this is I, I have three scenarios on next steps. So if you're desperate for funding, like you really do need some funding for whatever reason, a uh, new customer mm -hmm. coming on board that's going to require a whole bunch of new capital or a new piece of equipment, that sort of thing what is the like very next thing that you should do? And um, we try to leave all our webinars with this, with like uh, a next step. So I came up with three on this. Um, well, I think, uh, I think you, you know, you should take advantage of your free credit report. Um, you know, everyone is authorized one uh, credit check per year. It's mm -hmm. the law. The first thing you should do is educate yourself on what your credit situation is. Um, having that information and now qualify that with the FICO scores that pull up on your free credit report are the highest available credit scores that you have. The FICO is, you know, based on the lender is derived from multiple, um, you know, points or ways that they score it. So a, a car dealership might pull your credit and see it's a 680 and a home mortgage company might say it's a 703. And, you know, another company credit card might pull and see it's a 740 all in the same week. It's because they all have different data points. Mm -hmm. But the main thing is, is educate yourself on, you know, uh, making sure that there's nothing delinquent, what the reports are saying as far as your credit card usage and, and things of that nature. Because, I, you know, clients will, I, I've been on the phone with clients and I talk to them and I ask them about their credit and they'll tell me, oh, it's, you know, I've got this issue, that issue, blah, blah, blah. And then, then I'll pull their credit for them. I find out those issues aren't there. And I go back to them and say, what do you, where'd you get this idea? So I'm looking at your tri merge and there's, there's no late pay here, late pay that. And they're like, oh, that's what the other guy told me. That's why he's going to charge me so much. Oh. <laughs> so now you um, stuff first. <laughs> yeah, no, no, know exactly what your profile is. And the yeah. same with your, your, your business. I mean, you can contact Experian, you can contact Dun & Bradstreet and get a copy of your report. You know, if you sign up, become a member of Dun & Bradstreet, they, Dun & Bradstreet, they will help you improve your credit score for, depending on your industry, a couple hundred dollars to a thousand dollars a year. And, mm -hmm. and you can usually make that money back in savings on financing, you know, tenfold if you do it. Yeah, interesting. What about if you are, uh, you're just considering funding? So you don't have, you know, immediate needs, but you're just, you know, you kind of have some general ideas. What are some things that you should be doing besides the knowing your own credit report situation? Um, I, I think monitoring, uh, monitoring your daily balances in your business checking account, because the way most of the scoring system works um, outside of SBA is they all look at uh, how many days you're running negative. Even if it's not a cash advance, it's a credit line company or a term loan, they're going to look at uh, any, the number of negative days or overdrafts per month because um, that just tells them how close the the margin is, you know, profit and your expenses are. If, if you're constantly running negative, you know, there's an issue there. You know, sometimes it's just a matter of, of getting financing to to stop tapping your cash flow. But that's kind of a big thing, managing your credit and then uh, looking at your business checking account, checking your business credit. 
um, because you know an ounce of prevention can can save you just a lot of financing pain when it comes time to pull the trigger. Yeah. So if you were uh, taking a look at things and you're like, okay, I want to make myself look best, um, how long do I need to uh, be on my best behavior? How long do I need to be on the diet uh, to make it look normal, or is there just it just doesn't matter? No, it's, um, you know, on the business credit side, the great news is unlike personal credit, you can, you can get hardcore into Experian and Dun & Bradstreet, and they'll update it uh, quickly. Like a lot of vendors, a lot of clients don't know this, but their vendors will only report if you're delinquent on a, you know, um, an agreement, like you have net 30 terms and you're consistently 75 days late. Well, you know, Betty in the accounting office is going to report that to DNB as a slow pay client because it's going to cause you pain and you're going to pay them. Uh, but let's say you got caught up with Betty and now you're her favorite client and she just hasn't updated Dun & Bradstreet. Well, if you call Dun & Bradstreet Experience and say, hey, that's inaccurate, you know, solicit, I need you to reach out and contact this, this company that's reporting me a slow pay and update that information. Boom, it's updated, you know, and then they'll fix it. They'll go back and she'll say, oh, they've actually been current for the last six months and, and they'll easily go back and correct it right so you can fix those things you know quickly but if a lender pulls that information down and then you go fix it it just doesn't help you because now it, it looks you know suspicious because why didn't you do this before you called right yeah um yeah and then obviously managing you know managing your cash flow and it's you know um, it's always best to give yourself um you know time to uh to look for the best finance. Like some clients just don't qualify for the better term loans. They're only going to get a working capital deal. Well, if you take your time, you're going to find one, one or two options with, with decent terms and with the most favorable early payoff and those things. So um, giving yourself time is good. You know, unfortunately, a lot of business owners call on a Monday and they got to have <laughs> 250000 by Friday. By Friday. Well, your right. options are limited. Yeah. So, so what about the guy who's like, you know, I no, I don't need fine, you know, I've got uh, your your brother-in-law, right? The like, mm -hmm. I just really don't have funding needs. Uh, what should I be doing? Uh, because things do change, right? And they seem to change in right. a hurry. And so, what is my uh, the best steps on, of things that I haven't done, or is it just all the things that you've said so far? Yeah, I mean, if somebody doesn't, you know, if somebody doesn't need money, or if you've got uh, business owners who, you know, are fine saving up money until they just buy the equipment cash or self fund the projects, then, you know, if they're, if they're not losing out on any revenue from that, then hey, my hat's off to them. That's like, there's no, there's nothing better than your own money. Um, you know, but it, it, it it's difficult because business owners, um, you know, they, it's hard for them to plan six or 12 months um, ahead of time because they get surprised with opportunities um, you know to get big contracts they got to run out and get the financing for it and they're also surprised you know because two of their best clients leave and go somewhere else and suddenly the revenue drops right so it's yeah. on the financing side it, it's often more you know really of a, of a reaction thing um, I, I would say you know if you're getting uh, a regular amount of solicitations try and build a rapport with a couple of these people that are um, soliciting you and start to kind of work your way through the noise. Um, Cause it's uh, you know, they have constantly have people banging on them via, via, you know, voicemail drops, yeah. texting, emails um, and reach out and try and establish a rapport and get disclosures from these people about what they really offer and, and, you know, and what it is. Um, so that when it is time for you to finance, you're going to have three or four guys that you can reach out to that you can say, hey, okay, well, I'm going to talk to these people. Let me know what your best offer is. You can get those disclosures and so forth. Um, you know, the problem is, is, you know, business owners, um, they get under duress and they got to pull the trigger quickly. And they, and it's very much, I'm going to take this. It, you know, it's not a great option, but I'll deal with it in three or four months when it's a problem. Right now, I got to get to the end of the week. Right. So, you know, and, and, and you understand, like, unless you've been a business owner and have had to make payroll or had to face, you know, not making any money, you know, you don't understand the stress that comes with that role. I mean, you've got obligations to people who have families. You got your own family to take care of. So 
Um, there's a lot of pressure there. A lot of times business owners just have to do what they have to do and they'll figure it out later. Um, but that's a tough spot to get into. So if, you know, if you're getting solicitations, um, you know, just, just remember the old, the old thing is, is if it's too good to be true, it really is not true. <laughs> Perfect. Good stuff. So, uh, Rob, this is your business. Do I have this right? Bankloandepot.com? Yes, you do. Very good. So that the contact information there. And then if you ever, I don't know, that a marketing plan or if you need to eat, but, but since we're hosting this, I thought I'd throw leadgencompass.com in there too. But for the most part, this is, uh, we're done. And so cool. thank you. Uh, that was very informative uh, for me. And then I think uh, we'll have the recording. So we'll uh, get the recording out to everybody uh, that registered for it. And, um, and then we'll uh, do some other things with this, like I uh, uh, told you previously. Oh, well, I appreciate it. Okay. Thanks. Uh, thanks for letting me talk. I appreciate your time. <laughs> you bet. Thanks, Rob. And, All right, thanks, uh, guys.